uh, hi everyone. I'm Beverly. I'm the business manager at Foothold. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, uh, this Foothold webinar in partnership with Local, uh, and we'll be talking about the time and time today. Um, some of you may know that Foothold has a 130 year long degree of success in the family. Um, and because we want to support as many people as we can, our focus is now to offer more digital support. Um, so that we can access it from any form of the world, basically. Um, with that in mind, we have some news to share that we recently launched a world in the house. Um, it's available to all engineers and families across the world. Um, it's free to use, clinically approved, and covers topics like workplace stress, low mood, and there's a whole section on financial settings as well. Um, so if there's a problem you want to address, or learn to uh, learn more to learn more about the topic, um, it, it is. Uh, the link to the Harvest in Hand at Section is screen. Um, so please do have a look and um, have a little look at where you have and see if there's anything with it. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Today's presentation will be around 30 minutes. Uh, we'll try and your questions at the end. Unfortunately, we're not able to record these sessions, but as we go along, if you have questions, please post them in the questions box at any point. And we can start with them um, as many as we can do. Um, if your questions don't answer, please don't worry. We'll be sending around all the questions and answers afterwards. Um, but for now, I'll hand it over to Mike and Mike's last, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Good stuff. Thanks very much, Beverly. And yes, hi, everyone. It's good to speak to you all. Um, I'm just going to see if I can move this out of the way so you can see the screen okay. So yeah, in terms of today's session then, a bit of an introduction. So who are Mercer Life Benefits? How are we going to help with this? Appreciate retirement can be a tricky topic, uh, one that people struggle to get right. We're going to give you some ideas as to how you can get engaged with this and indeed where you can get some further support. In terms of our role when it comes to this, our first principle really is that we want to help you be better informed. So that's ultimately what we're driving for here. We're going to do this providing information that's free from bias. What we won't be doing is giving any financial advice today, but the information we provide will be factual, clear, fair and not misleading. If you do have any questions as we go through, um, then type away while they're fresh and we can come to those at the end. In terms of things to think about when it comes to retirement planning, then this can represent a big challenge and a big change in terms of lifestyle. I would always encourage people to start with thinking about lifestyle rather than looking at product information and looking at kind of financial options. So starting with lifestyle considerations and thinking about what we want from our lives, from that we can then start to build a retirement strategy that we can have confidence in and that's going to give us the best chance of achieving all that we want. So in terms of some of the areas we're going to look at as we move to, through today's session, we'll talk a bit about change, some values and preferences, a bit around the broader well-being picture uh, and think about some of the things in relation to the value of work. We're also going to talk about UK pension plans and how you can use those to fund your retirement, as well as some broader planning considerations if you're looking at building financial plans, retirement planning or otherwise. So if we start with a look at change and thinking about change and transition, we tend to find change a slightly difficult process and transition in certainly big transitions can be intimidating, can be scary. We see this change generally from resistance towards acceptance and commitment within any main major life changes. I guess the big difference that we have with retirement planning, perhaps compared to some other big life changes, is that we know that it's coming. So if we think about retirement planning, we know that probably at some point we're going to want to stop work. At that point, we're going to want to be doing something different or we want to find something else to take up our time. So we can see that change is going to be coming and therefore we can look to prepare for it, to build plans and to make this transition as easy as possible. So isn't an end but a chance for a new beginnings if we think about retirement. Of course, we're going to be stopping work in one sense, but that's not to say that we'll stop work entirely. What we'll hopefully be doing is giving ourselves some options here, perhaps changing how we perceive work and doing things slightly differently. There are certainties that we're going to need to think about to what's going to happen and when, but there's also going to be uncertainties and things we'll need to plan around certain what if scenarios. So thinking about some clear goals and setting out some of those, but also thinking about some what ifs is going to be useful so that we can be best prepared for all eventualities in relation to our retirement. 
if we have a think then about our well-being, so as we move from full-time work into whatever comes beyond it, maintaining positive well-being is going to be at the heart of any good retirement strategy. When it comes to our well-being, there are four key pillars to pay attention to. So our mental health is certainly one of these, so thinking about our psychological and emotional, emotional condition. Our physical well-being, how do we keep ourselves fit, keep our health levels as good as they can be. Our social well-being, so our ability to form and maintain meaningful relationships, a sense of belonging, and then finally our financial health. So thinking about not just the amount of money that we've got here, but our relationship with money and how we're, well we're doing in certain areas. So key areas being things like spending, how resilient we are, and then thinking about our kind of freedom and the sense of financial freedom that we have, as well as plans for any future goals. So keeping up good health in each of these four areas is going to be important. So when we're thinking about our retirement plans, it's going to be important that we're paying attention to each of these and working out what we're going to do in all of these areas to maintain good health. We're going to talk a lot about the financial side of things in today's session, but we will touch on some of these other areas as well and how you can think about maintaining positive health in all of these four areas. Each of the four interact. So negative health in one area is likely to spill over and have a negative impact on the others. For example, if we've got financial stress, then that is going to negatively impact our physical and mental health. There are studies that have been done that show the evidence around that, and there is a strong link between those things. Similarly, if we're in poor mental health, that's likely to mean we'll struggle to manage our finances effectively. So again, just highlighting the reason that all four of these areas are going to need to be paid close attention to. If we start to think then about what we should be looking for in terms of a retirement plan, it's worth thinking about what we really value. If we think about our current lifestyle and as we move towards retirement, what elements of our current lifestyle do we really value? What do we want to be carrying on into retirement? What things do we look to make changes to? We're all, of course, unique as individuals. So we're all going to have, excuse me, our own ideas here, differing priorities. But really having to think about what makes us tick is going to be helpful so that we can ensure um, that we're doing what we want to be as we move towards retirement and beyond. So what do we value from things like culture, our experiences, relationships, achievements, all of this stuff um, that gives us that kind of sense of accomplishment, contributes to some of those other areas of well-being beyond the financial. Those are going to be important things to think about. We can start to look at building a retirement plan that ensures we can maintain those as we move into retirement. If we think about what we like and enjoy doing at the moment, certainly at work, there's going to be certain elements that we may enjoy doing. And therefore, we may want to look at ways we can continue those into retirement. The key thing really with retirement planning and building a good retirement plan is that we'd like the option to stop work at some point if we want to. I speak to lots of people about their retirement planning and people at various stages in this journey. What you want to get to is a position where work becomes something that you're doing because you're choosing to do it rather than perhaps because there's a financial compulsion to do it. And that will change its perception quite dramatically. Uh, so you can then start to think about how can I transfer things that I like about work and carry on doing those while perhaps getting rid of the, some of the things that you may not enjoy quite so much. Similarly, thinking about preferred skills, knowledge areas, interests and hobbies, again, what things there have we got that we value a lot? And where do we want to build a plan that's going to ensure we can incorporate those in a lasting way into our life beyond full time employment where we may be currently? Of course, understanding the things that you don't enjoy so much is going to be just as important. So you can look to minimise where they're playing a role. So can you look to minimise those things that you're doing more of what you like, less of what you don't? That ultimately is the type of retirement strategy that we're going to try and build here. So when it comes to thinking about the value of work, of course, as we said, work can be very, very valuable in some ways. And so thinking about working and retirement can seem a bit strange. Retirement traditionally would be a point that you stop work. But actually, if we think about it in the modern sense. There's no need to stop work in order to start, for example, accessing pension funds. If you're in the UK, you can access that money while still working. You may just decide to be working in a slightly different way. So if there's no longer that compulsion in the financial sense, you could be looking to work for other reasons. So perhaps volunteering to do something slightly different. Do you need income? Uh, do you look to do part time work just occasionally? So looking at perhaps reframing how we're using work as part of that lifestyle, not just to generate salary and income because we may be able to get that from other sources, but to provide some of those broader benefits in terms of giving us that fulfillment and that enjoyment that we may currently get from it. 
So can working in retirement provide things that no other type of activity can provide? Well, this is certainly quite possible. So here we might be finding things like social contact, a sense of belonging, things that being involved in a work setting can give us very easily, that may be difficult to achieve elsewhere. Can we achieve professional things and get a sense of purpose again from doing some kind of work that again, we may find difficult to achieve elsewhere? Do we want to make a contribution in some sense? Uh, that could be a slight shift in terms of the work that we're doing. So are we doing some volunteering, some charitable work, perhaps something that we wanted to do more with our time of while we're in work, but perhaps full-time work didn't give us the capability or the capacity to be able to do that. We now have a bit more time and therefore can afford to do it. So starting to think about some of these things so that we can start to look at how we're gonna involve work in our journey towards full-time retirement. Of course, more income is something that could give, but if we're looking at the income we could expect from our assets and we want more than that, then again, doing some kind of work is going to be a way that we could get our hands on that. So in essence here, we can think about retaining some of the positive things that we enjoy about work today, starting to get rid of some of those negative things. If we can do that, do that then we're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. Uh, so that is going to be something that's going to be very useful as we're thinking about what our retirement looks like. So as we said, work doesn't necessarily equal a job, necessarily equal a job. The difference there is going to be that compulsion. If we feel like we're working because we need to pay the bills and that's the primarily that's the primary reason for our work, then that's not going to be as fulfilling as if we're doing it because we choose to. So if we can get to a position where we're choosing to work, then that's going to be great news and that's going to have good impact, as I've said. So things to consider here then, are we looking at paid work, flexible working, part-time work? all things that could contribute financially to our retirement plans, but also contribute in some of those ways beyond the financial aspect. Are we thinking about a new career perhaps? So some of us will see retirement as a chance for that change, a transition, but transition not perhaps into full-time non-work, but as a new opportunity to start something new. If we look at typical retirement ages, people typically leave the workforce still around about 65 these days. If we look at life expectancy, You've probably got a couple of decades from that point onwards. So for many, there's opportunity to do new things, start new careers, even in different areas, do voluntary work, overseas projects, all things that could offer great excitement in that um, kind of early retirement and a chance to do things that are going to be particularly rewarding. So thinking about some of those things, it's going to be useful to think about transferable skills. Have you got a CV? Have you got a business plan? If you're thinking about launching a new business, do you understand the market that you're looking to operate in? These are all things that you can do in preparation so that when the time comes, you're well prepared for it. You've got plans that are well laid out and therefore implementing them is going to be easier than if you come at it from a standing start at the point of retirement, trying to get yourself up to speed, having not prepared for these things. In terms of other things that are going to be useful to think about when looking at maintaining positive health in retirement, continued learning is certainly one. Uh, and so one aspect of good mental health is learning new things. So the NHS has some good guidance, five tips for maintaining positive mental health. Learning new things is certainly one of them. So continued learning is, again, something that we may want to try and build into our retirement strategy. Have we uh, kind of penciled in some time to be doing this? Have we got a way of ensuring that we are going to continue learning so there may be something that you've always wanted to do or learn that again you've not had time to because of the pressures of full-time employment once you've got a bit more flexibility and the flexibility that retirement can bring then again this is a chance to commit some time to doing some of that stuff uh, investing some time in learning something new do you have skills already uh, or areas of knowledge that you'd like to improve on uh, so again areas that you'd like to concentrate on here and start to develop having those things to um, to kind of aim at and to dedicate time to can again have big benefits in terms of that uh, kind of that positive mental well-being picture. So our retirement gives us the opportunity for these new experiences to try things out. What we don't have here is the fear of wasting time, perhaps, as we may have when we're in full time employment and every minute we've got spare may be very precious. With retirement, we may have a lot more time on our hands, so we can afford to be a bit more experimental here. We can try out things and see what kind of provokes our interest, provokes our excitement and look to then build those more and more into what our retirement lifestyle looks like. Of course, not going to know what we don't like until we've actually done some of these things. And so, again, there's a great opportunity there within retirement to look at trying new things. Um, and so whilst it could be a time for relaxation, uh, it could also be a time for um, expending lots of energy, doing new things uh, and experimenting. And that certainly is what we see from lots of people who are entering retirement today. Um, it's certainly a lot more 
popular and a lot more common to spend, particularly the early retirement, doing uh, kind of long held ambitions, ticking things off uh, bucket lists, uh, long held aspirations that otherwise have not been had time to work towards. If we find some extra things, we can review plans then, so we can look at discarding old hobbies, interests that we're maybe no longer keen on, and we can look and decide what we want in our lives. So again, all of this is about building that structure, about having visibility about what we value, what we want to have in our life. So structured thinking around this, we can start to build a retirement plan with that structure that enables us to incorporate all of this stuff. If we start then to think about planning and financial planning, so how can we start to build a plan that is going to give us a chance of opening up our options in retirement, giving us the prospect of uh, maximizing well-being and really having a fulfilling and enjoyable retirement. A few um, things we're going to want to think about here will be uh, what do we need and want? So if we start with thinking about lifestyle, start by thinking about key aspirations that we have, um, you know, key milestones, big events that may be arising during our retirement. When are those events? What do we want them to look like? That then we can start to translate into financial goals and then we can start to build some plans to make sure we're going to achieve them. So thinking about what do we need and want, that's going to be the first step here. So thinking about those things and then potentially attaching some financial value to them may, means that we can make a financial plan towards them. When are those things? Uh, so what's the timing involved here? Again, that's going to help us in terms of building a plan towards them. And what do we already have in place? So what plans do we have in place that we could already use towards them? So that could be things like pension plans, could be other assets that we've got. Um, property perhaps that we could release some value from so what have we got in terms of assets to make sure that we've got a good understanding of what we're working with and therefore we can ensure we're making the most of it is there a gap then or a surplus so do we already have sufficient assets that we can use to meet those goals or are there or is there a gap do we need to start to build up further assets in order to make those goals achievable and once you've thought about all these things then you can start to look at what to do next so this is where you can then start to take some concrete action that is going to ensure you're maximizing the chances of being able to hit those goals that you've set for yourself. So if we can smart, be smart about these things, smart goals, something that you may well be familiar with from your professional career, so we can translate this into our personal lives and use this to our advantage when it comes to financial planning. We can be smart about our goals here um, to really make those things tangible, uh, all of those smart aspects, then that is going to maximize the chance of hitting them. It's going to give us something that we can build a clear plan around. And when it comes to building that plan, so what are the key things that we should be thinking about here? Well, there's probably nine key areas um, that we'd be looking at. If we were to go to a financial advisor um, and ask for help in building a financial strategy, these are probably the key areas that they'd be thinking about. There's nothing to stop you looking at each of these areas for yourself though, and starting to build a plan around them. Number one on the list here is going to be purpose. So that is thinking about those goals. What is it that I'm looking to achieve? And that's a crucial first thing. So again, one action I'd encourage you to take off the back of this is if you don't have any expressed goals at the moment, then write some down to start to think about things that you want to see happening as you move towards retirement and beyond. Having those clear purposes is going to give you a why, so some encouragement, some motivation to put the effort in and the time and energy towards this. But it's also going to allow you to then choose what an appropriate strategy looks like to make those things achievable. Other areas we'll be thinking about flexibility versus certainty. So how much flexibility can we afford in our goal? How much certainty do we need? There may be certain things where we definitely need a set amount of capital as a set point in the future. Therefore, we can't afford much flexibility there. We need a great deal of certainty. There may be other aspirations in our retirement where we can afford a bit more flexibility. And that's going to inform perhaps what an appropriate strategy looks like. What are we doing on the investment side of things? So are we looking for something that's high risk, low risk? Are we looking for something that will grow lots in capital value, something that will generate income? So there's lots of investment choice out there. Investment can be an area that is intimidating, but there are simple ways to start building literacy there if you're not confident in that area. So I would encourage you to start doing that. If you're not confident on the investment side of things, start to invest first of all some time in doing some research. And then beyond that, you can start to invest capital in a way that is going to be beneficial for you. Timing, again, kind of linked with that flexibility. Um, so you may have flexibility in terms of amount, but you may also have flexibility in timing. So when exactly do you need things? Shorter term goals, you're going to need probably lower risk assets and more clear clarity around what you're doing there. For longer term goals, you may be able to afford a bit more risk on the investment side of things, and a bit more flexibility. 
Other considerations, so mortality, thinking about some what ifs perhaps, um, so making sure that you've considered what if scenarios may not be the most fun, uh, but of course our lives are finite. We don't know when they're going to end, but thinking about what happens if they do and ensuring that we've made plans accordingly. It's going to be one element of planning here and building an effective strategy. Um, risk I've kind of touched on already, uh, but again, making sure, particularly in retirement, we're not exposing ourselves to big risks that we're not comfortable with because that could produce financial stress, uh, which, as we said at the start, can have a negative impact on our broader well-being. Other considerations then would be things like products and providers, so making sure we're we're making use of the, the products we have available, the best providers available. And then thinking about tax implications, so are we being tax efficient? Those things are going to be useful in terms of ensuring efficiency. And the final thing on here we have is help and advice. So do we need advice around what we're doing? Do we need further assistance? Where can we go if we are in search of it? So thinking about all of those nine key areas, that's going to give us a route towards an informed decision. We can then take action that we have confidence in. We've thought about the key areas, we've made a plan, and that is going to give us confidence that we are heading in the right direction. Once we've done that, that's not going to be our work done. There are variables which will impact our financial plans, and we are going to need to keep things under review here. There are things that we're in direct control of. Um, so here, things like choice of product and provider, our understanding of financial products of financial markets. So spending time to review that, if our understanding changes, that may change what we're doing. We may want to review our providers regularly because new products may become available, better deals may become available. We're in control of that stuff, uh, so it's going to be important that we focus on that, take a proactive approach when it comes to those things. There are things beyond that then that we're not in direct control over, but that we do influence, so things like investment charges, product charges. So we've got an influence there, um, so again, it's going to be worth thinking about what we're doing in that respect. And then there are things that are beyond our control, so things like legislation changes, financial shocks. Of course, we're not going to sign ourselves up for those. We don't have control over those, but they may come along. Um, it's how we respond to those things that's going to be important. So there may be events that happen that are out of our control that prompt a review and to prompt us to look back at the plans we've made. Are they still appropriate? Have we still got everything in order? Do we need to change slightly the plans that we put in place? So here we can think about a kind of cycle as to how we can start to build a strategy that is going to give us something that will work for our retirement and give us that lasting chance of good financial well-being. Hopefully that's going to positively influence those other areas of well-being, give us a sense of financial freedom. So thinking first of all at the top here, we've got looking at our aspirations. So that's a place to start. As I said, writing down goals is going to be very useful. And just doing that is going to increase the chances of hitting them. So thinking about what we want lifestyle wise as we move towards retirement and beyond. So thinking perhaps about income levels, but also about big events that we may want to be doing, things that we're wanting to achieve. So um, starting to really look at that lifestyle so we can have some clear aspirations around that. Once we've got clarity, then we can start to look at our current choices and see what we've got in place. We may need to define our goals more clearly. If we've thought about aspirations, but we've not clearly defined goals, we're going to want to translate those aspirations into some smart goals so we've got some clear things to aim for. Once we've got that, we can then start prioritising. So we can look at prioritising between different goals, starting to work out what's the most important, what's the least important, and then that's going to inform how much we're committing to achieving these things both in terms of time and energy, but also potentially in terms of financial assets. We can start to then examine some of those key factors. So thinking about those nine key areas that I talked about and looking at the relevant decisions in each of them. Getting good information on each of those is going to be important. So we're going to want to secure information on each of those areas so that we can start to make informed decisions here. We can start to play out different choices and think about what each of those would mean based on facts and factual information rather than instinctive decisions uh, which could lead us astray. And that will then lead us to a point where we can act so we can make active decisions knowing that we've considered all the right things and therefore we can act with confidence. As I said, this is going to be cyclical, so it's not going to be a one and done type situation. It is going to be cyclical. Hopefully we're going to be ticking off certain aspirations as we go, uh, achieving things and then setting new goals for ourselves. And so this will be an evolving picture across the course of our um, journey towards retirement and beyond. Uh, but that is a kind of framework that we can use to ensure that we've got that lasting uh, kind of financial well-being in place. Um, if we think about funding our retirement then and how we can do this, here we're focusing on UK pension arrangements. So appreciate you know, some of you may be outside of the UK, but just a quick word on UK arrangements and what you've got here. So in terms of the state pension, UK state pension up to £175.20 a week 
That's what you'll get based on your national insurance record. So 35 qualifying years would get you that full amount. That does go up every year in line with in, uh, in line with inflation or an average earnings measure, or indeed by two and a half percent if higher, so whatever the biggest of those three is. That's only payable though once you hit your state pension age, which is currently 66. In addition to that, you've got uh, potentially defined contribution pension arrangements. So these are the most common arrangement in the UK. How do these work? You're going to pay money into these things and the contributions that you make are free from tax and national insurance. So some big tax benefits if you're using these things to save for your retirement. And that's why for most in the UK, these are going to be the primary vehicle for your retirement savings. The money that you pay into these will go into your pension fund. So it's your pension policy that will be invested somewhere in assets. You're hoping those assets will grow in value over time, albeit, of course, there's no guarantees in that respect. You could see the value of your investments go down as well as up. You'll also pay a management charge on your pension arrangements. You'll see that come out. But of course, you're hoping the growth will more than cover that as you will see growth over time. Once you hit a minimum retirement age, you can look to access the money in your funds. So you don't have to wait until your state pension age here. So whilst the state pension age is 66, the money in these plans can be accessed from age 55 currently, although that is going up to 57 in 2028. When it comes to accessing the money, you've got lots of options here. So you can pretty much do what you want with the money. Really what you're choosing to do with, with the money or with chunks of the money is purchase a secure income or buy an unsecure income. If we think about these two options and the fundamentals, if you imagine that your pension fund was an apple tree, you've been growing in your garden up until the point of retirement, and you want from it to generate apples to sustain you in your retirement, how can you do so? If you go down the secure income route, what you're doing is effectively swapping your apple tree for a guaranteed number of apples back each month. You'd no longer have your apple tree, but you would have a certainty of income. You're gonna know how many apples you're gonna get every month, no matter how long you live, they are gonna to continue to be paid. On the other hand, the unsecure income, what you're doing there with your apple tree, not swapping it for a guaranteed number of apples back each month, but you're gonna keep it in the garden, pluck apples from it as and when you want them. This gives you full flexibility over how many apples you take and when, but it does mean there's still risk that comes with that. If lots of apples grow on your tree, then you can feast upon them. But if your apple tree gets struck by lightning, then you've got some pretty big problems on your hands, as unlikely as that may be. So in the pension sense, you could buy a secure income, an annuity, it gives you a guaranteed income for life, you have to pay for that security and you have to give away your pension fund to get it or you can keep hold of the pension fund choose to use it flexibly but you retain the risk that come with managing that money and it's not a one and done here you can split between these so you can use part of your money securely part of it unsecurely so that's a very high level look at some of the things you can do when it comes to uk pension plans in terms of making a plan then these are some of the key things to think about so what do you want to do? As I said, starting with that lifestyle and thinking about lifestyle aspirations, that will lead you towards how much income do you need? Um, you know, when do you need it? How much security do you need? How much flexibility do you need? So starting with all of those kind of lifestyle considerations. What then are you expecting from the state pension, other pensions? So that's starting to look at that. What do you have type stuff? Are there other assets then that you could use to help? Um, do you need to be saving more now in order to give you a better chance of getting to the type of income, the type of and financial goals that you've set for yourself. If you do, then the sooner you can identify that, the better, um, because whilst you've still got time, contributing more perhaps to a pension arrangement, for example, could help to boost your retirement position. So thinking about that is gonna be very worthwhile. So do start to think about how you can make a plan here. There is some help that you have available here, so Foothold do offer further support in the form of the Retirement Planning at Home Service, a uh, Mercer Marsh Benefit Service that is funded by Foothold for eligible members. Um, so this gives you extensive support around both those lifestyle considerations and also the financial considerations when it comes to retirement planning. So Foothold have agreed to fund this for all eligible members. So you do have access to this. Beverly can get you signed up for this. So do contact her if you want further information or to get yourself signed up. That's so her email address is on the screen here. In terms of what you get, three uh, kind of aspects to this. So online course workbook, workbook. Uh, and then the friend calls so talking about each of these in a bit more detail the online course what's this well this is designed to replicate our two-day retirement planning course uh, of course with um, the lockdowns and coronavirus and all the rest of it our in-person courses have not been happening so we've designed this course primarily to replicate those and to provide an extensive range of resources both around financial well-being and finance there's lots of interactive stuff on there over 20 hours of content designed to help you proceed at your own pace and convenience, preferred depth and complexity, so you can 
and kind of explore this as much as you want, look into lots of detail that's available. Five hours of narration to guide you through the content that's on there. And you can also save there your notes, ideas, figures and calculations. So you can visit this, put in some details, come back to it a bit later on. Um, so this does give you a great resource to start to build that financial strategy and the wellbeing strategy that you can have confidence in where your retirement is heading. You've got the workbook as well. So for those who um, prefer something more kind of tangible and a bit more old school, perhaps you've got the workbook that you can work through here. Um, so this is going to provide loads of good stuff, insight exercises, again, structure to your thinking so you can start to uh, kind of build that structured thinking to your retirement plans. Again, that are going to give you confidence that you can build something that really is going to make the most out of your retirement and ensure that you're doing all you can to keep positive well-being in all of those areas. So things like uh, kind of choosing where to live exercises so how you can go about making an informed decision around that so lots of great exercises in there you can see it's got kind of scoring matrix that will help lead you towards where an appropriate place may be so it's decisions like that as well as many others that these resources are going to help you to make informed decisions around and then help you with planning some actions so that you can kind of move forward with them you also have the expert friend call so this is um focus on that financial and lifestyle um, so where you benefit from talking to a financial services professional, a retirement expert, this is someone who's going to talk to you here, uh, talk through those decisions with you. They're not going to give you regulated financial advice, but they will be able to answer your questions, challenge you on your decision making process and give you information about the choices in front of you. Typically, things that we'd be covering here uh, would be making sure that you're clear on the facts related to your circumstances, checking the reasons behind certain things. So are we clear about why you're doing certain things? And confirming what you should be thinking about when making a decision to have you thought about some of those factors we mentioned before and perhaps other things that may be relevant when it comes to your decision making and then finally considering potential strengths and weaknesses of particular courses of action uh, i.e looking at accessing a pension at 55 to clear a mortgage versus not doing it for example something that we're often asked about so exploring some of those options and you can use those calls you'd have two calls um so one perhaps in the lead up when you're looking at putting some of those plans in place and then one perhaps once you've clarified your thinking just to check that your thought process is correct and that you've not missed anything when it comes to that. So in terms of actions then to take off the back of today's session you do have access to that resource. First thing though is going to be thinking about your objectives so do start to think about that. Start by making a list of things you enjoy doing along with the things that you don't. You've got the choice um, so you're going to have the choice as you move into retirement so you can choose to avoid things you don't want to do and you can choose to try and build in a strategy that gives you more of what you like doing so do have a look at that. Think about what's available in your local area. So start to do research about how can you do more of those things that you like? What kind of resources are there available in um, your local area? In the workbook, there's exercises around that. So thinking through your future. So if you are interested in that, do get yourself signed up for the retirement planning at home service. And then you can run through that, um, that thinking about your future. Also stuff around budget planning is in there. So that's going to be helpful, whether you use a retirement planning home service, a home service or not. So think about your spending and how that's going to evolve as you move into retirement uh, so you can ensure again you've got clarity around that so how can you uh, then how can you bring structure and purpose to your day again thinking about that whether that's some kind of work some kind of volunteering or uh, doing some of those other activities hobbies whatever it may be just thinking about that uh, in the lead up to retirement so that you're well prepared you know what you're doing uh, you've got that clarity and uh, vision ahead uh, that will again give you confidence and optimism hopefully as you move towards it to make that transition easier and uh, not perhaps as intimidating as it may be if you've not given any thought to that and arrive at it unprepared as i said in order to access the retirement planning at home service then do speak to beverly about that to beverly archer email address at the bottom there and um, to do get in contact if you do want to make use of that and then that can give you much more further information what we've talked about today is really just a small snippet of some of the key considerations that will give you much more information on how to build a retirement strategy that works for you okay it doesn't look like we do have any questions but hopefully that has given you some clear uh, kind of things to think about and where you can go for further support on that so i would encourage you to make use of that uh, again thanks very much for your time everyone uh, good luck with it and i'll say goodbye for now